our second text for today, our sermonic text, comes from the book of Revelation, the first chapter, verses 4 through 8. But before we read, that's right, Bible check, Bible check, Bible check, we encourage you to bring your Bibles when you come to the house of the Lord. Please join me there at Revelation 1, verses 4 through 8. Listen and read along. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him so shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today for your blessings, all that you have done, and for this time, this opportunity. So right now, Make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more and fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you. And upon hearing from you, we want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes. Yes, Lord, we want to walk out of here better than the way we walked in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you would, please, my friends, turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me. Friend, today's sermon is, who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. <laughs> there was once a wrestler by the name of Brett the Hitman Hart. Now he wasn't a Greco-Roman wrestler. He didn't do the type of wrestling that we see in the Olympics or that you would go through in high school, in college. Um, but he did more what we would call when I was a kid, wrestling. He was a wrestler on television. And he donned himself the excellence of execution. But he would often say of himself, I am the best there was, the best there is, and the best there ever will be. This triadic description was not created by Bret Hart. It's actually been used for millennia. You see, what we have in our text is but a di direct response to another triadic description that the Romans used of Caesar. Caesar was, Caesar is, and Caesar will be. The Greeks used it of Zeus. Zeus was, Zeus is, and Zeus will be. Bret Hart performed as if what he said of himself was true. He performed as if he believed what he had said of himself. And in so believing it, it governed how he entertained in the squared circle. 
what, my friends, do our lives reveal about the Lord's triadic description that John gives? We'll spend a little time answering that question, but a little background as to where we are. Seven. The number seven is one of two numbers for completion and holiness in scripture. The other number is 12. Seven and 12. And in the book of Revelation, my friends, seven often means more than its numerical value. Now, what we have in our text, the letter is written to the seven churches of Asia, but there were more than seven churches in Asia. Many more than seven in all of Asia that Paul and Timothy uh, and Titus established. But John uses the number seven to create a lens through which things holy and complete can be viewed in the book of Revelation. So, we have seven churches, we have seven seals, we have seven lampstands, we have seven trumpets, we have seven parsonages, personages rather, we have seven bowls, we have seven dooms, and we have seven new things in Revelation. Seven is the number to describe the whole and complete church for John. That's what he is referring to in this amazing letter. Now the text that we have today also has seven spirits. Now this, however, is to be taken literally because this refers to the seven archangels and we studied about the angels not too long ago. You see, it was believed that there were seven archangels whose names were Uriel, Raphael, Ragiel, Michael, Sariel, Remiel, Gabriel. These were the seven archangels. And Revelation carries an immense number of metaphors and analogies and symbolic impressions. But let me tell you why Revelation can be such a challenging letter to read. You see, the biggest challenge that we have with this letter is that we always try to view it from our perspective. And that's the wrong one. Because our perspective is a perspective of privilege. That's not what's going on here. Instead of the perspective of those it was written to, it was written to an impoverished people, a subjugated people, a hated people. So for them, Revelation is not something weird and strange and odd. Revelation, for them, is a letter of hope. Of hope. And not only was it written to a broken and terrified group, it's written by a prophetic apostle of Jesus Christ who has been exiled to live on the dangerous, treacherous, volcanic island of Patmos. You see, the writer of Revelation needs hope as well. And on the Lord's day, this revelation is given. You see, John finds hope in the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And John says three things about Jesus that is directly linked to the readers of this letter. First, he calls Jesus the faithful witness. You see, John's encouraging them to stand faithful during this persecution as Jesus stood faithfully before the Romans. John also says Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. You see, many Christians were dying because of their faith. By being the firstborn of the dead, Jesus gives promise to those Christian martyrs who gave their lives for the faith. The belief that we have as they had then is that the dead in Christ will rise. We believe in the resurrection from the dead. Amen? Amen. 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 And the third thing 
The third thing that John shares of Jesus is that Jesus is the ruler of the kings of the earth. Now, this title was often given to the Caesars. You see, John's use of it reveals that the Romans have used it inappropriately. They're wrong to say this of any Caesar. How many of us believe this? How many of us recognize this today? How many of us live our lives to share these things of Jesus? That Jesus is faithful. That Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. How many of us use these things in how we live our lives? Well, that's the point for this morning because what John is actually doing with this text is pushing us to answer one single question. Who is Jesus to me? Who is Jesus to me? The church that I grew up in, they gave us this answer every week sermons and through songs every week we heard that Jesus is a father to the fatherless Jesus is a mother to the motherless Jesus is a doctor in a sick room and a lawyer in the courtroom Jesus is water when I'm thirsty and food when I'm hungry Jesus is shelter in the time of storm but then I got older and I realized that Jesus was more than just these things to me. You see, Jesus is a way out when I need it and a way in when I can't find it. Jesus is the song in my heart that I have to sing. Jesus is the peace that steals my raging soul. Jesus is the QR code in my life that unlocks all the secrets that I need for right now, that I need for today. Jesus is the great reconciler. Jesus is the champion who will go to war with me. Jesus is the healer of my bruised pride and the rescuer of my fallen confidence. Yeah, Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is the Ancient of Days. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is sweet, I know. It's the lover of my soul. Jesus is everything that I need. Oh, hello, somebody. Uh, and I've needed Jesus a lot this week. And Jesus has not failed me. Jesus has been there for me through it all. But not only is he these things that I've mentioned, he's always been these things. And he will always be these things. And if we believe this, if we believe this, then we keep a hope that never dies. Oh, hello, somebody. A hope, yeah, that never dies. We may, plans will, dreams can, but because of Jesus, hope won't die. You see, our king will return. But until he does, how are you going to live your life? How will we live our lives? Prayerfully, hopefully, as people who know the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come. Blessed be the name of the Lord today. Amen.